climb out of this boat again onto the crashing way it's PJ McClure and I wanted to come and bring you another spiritual seed to plant for you from the folks here at the Mindset Maven and the thing I wanted to talk to you about today is actually faith and maybe in a little different sense than what you traditionally hear faith but that's just kind of what I do the thing that I wanted to talk to you about today regarding faith is really who's in control of it what it actually does and where it comes from and there's a specific instance in mind that I want to just take and just plant this little seed so that hopefully it can grow into something tremendous in your life because I talk to a lot of people and they have doubt they have unbelief they have a lack of faith uh, typically in themselves which if we think about it if we doubt that we can do anything we in turn are actually doubting or having faith in God now that might seem a little harsh not quite as easy to to take but that's the absolute truth. We're His design. We're His creation. So if we doubt that we can do something that we can see is in alignment with His will, that is kingdom-minded, if we doubt that that can happen, that is a direct doubt placed upon God as well. But when we think about it in and of ourselves, we tend to, well, I mean, honestly, as a people, we've got a history of placing the blame, the reason for our lack of faith, for our doubt, on other things, things outside of us, our upbringing, our current circumstances. We spend a lot of time blaming our lack of faith or our doubt on Satan and his minions. And the thing that I want to to talk about there is not that Satan isn't doesn't provide resistance to us, that he doesn't get in our way and put things in our way. He is the discourager of the brethren. We know that. But Satan and his minions do not control faith. They don't even have any power over faith. Okay, If they had power over faith, if of our own individual faith, we would see examples throughout Scripture of Jesus, his disciples, others casting out those demons. But you never see Jesus casting out a demon of unbelief. You don't see him casting out a demon that attacks faith or that controls faith. Instead, what you see him saying is, Oh, you of little faith, why don't you believe? Okay, and we see that over and over again. I, we talked about that in the, uh, the spiritual seed when we talked about Peter getting out of the boat. And when he started to sink, Jesus said, Why didn't you believe? Okay, he didn't say, I cast you out, demon. No, he just said, Why didn't you believe? That puts it on us. And the one in particular, one of the examples that put me in mind of it today, pick this up, so forgive me for looking down to, uh, to read, but it's actually in three of the Gospels, this particular example. And it's a, a, the same story, but a slightly, they add a few details here and there in each of the ones. And I want to just read them to you very quickly. We start off in Matthew 9. And it's just as Jesus is getting ready to head to the house of the man Jairus to actually raise his daughter from the dead. Now that's a whole other act of faith that we could use as an example, but it's not the one I want to touch on today. But while he's moving toward it, the Jairus asks him to come. My daughter has died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Okay, that's a lot of faith. Here's what I want to get to. Jesus rode and followed him, rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up from behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be healed. Now that's cool. But Jesus turned and seeing her said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. Let's look a little further, shall we? We go over to Mark chapter 5, and uh, it starts in verse 21, and I'm going to skip ahead of the part where Jairus is speaking with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. They ran on him tight. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. When she had heard the reports about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd, okay, this very tight, intense crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out of him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? This is the part that I think is hilarious. 
And his di disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? So in other words, there's just dozens, hundreds, thousands maybe even of people around him, pressing in on him. And they're going, what, Everybody's touching you. What do you mean, who touched you? But Jesus said to them, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And, and we see another example of it in Luke. In uh, Where do we see it? In chapter 8, I believe. It starts in verse 40 with the whole story. Then he asked, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceived power has gone out of me. And she came and told him, Daughter, your faith has... Told him what happened. He said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. There are a couple of things in that. One, it's obvious, I believe, that Jesus tells us over and over and over again that faith is our deal and how powerful it is and we have control over it, okay? The other thing that I think is amazing about that is that faith should not be assumed. Okay, healing should not be assumed. The ability to go forward and do great things, and you know, in God's presence and for the name of God, is not should not be assumed. Okay, there were dozens, hundreds of people crowding in, touching Jesus, and still yet one woman, with faith, touched him, and he perceived it. He knew it instantly. Jesus always recognized faith. God recognizes faith. The Holy Spirit moves and is magnified in our faith. That is the part of the equation that we've been given. I want to plant the seed for you that faith is our responsibility. Faith is in our control. And it's up to us to nurture and grow those small seeds of faith that God sowed within us so they can flourish in your life can be some kind of faithful, amazing example for the rest of the world to follow. I hope those seeds grow. Be blessed. Be your best.